Hello all, welcome back. The topic which we are discussing currently is the spark transformations and actions. In the previous video, I explained about what is lazy evaluation. Hope you are very clear with the concept of lazy evaluation. And I also gave an introduction to spark operations, which is nothing but the transformations and actions. In this video, let us try to understand the spark operation and the different methods under the transformation in detail. So what are spark operations? Spark has certain operation which can be performed on the RDDs. Okay. So an operation is a method which can be applied on the RDD to accomplish certain task. So RDD support two types of operations which are actions and transformation. An operation can be something as simple as sorting, filtering or summarizing the data. Okay. So let us try to understand the most commonly used uh, methods under transformations. The first comes the map. So what is a map function? A map function will distribute data set formed by passing each element of the source through the function. What does it mean? Let us try to understand with the help of an example. So I have a sample.txt file where I have few text which is written over it. The first is uh, just a random text like uh, hello world and then Apache Spark is a multi-language engine for executing the data engineering, data science and machine learning on single node clusters or uh, uh, machines or clusters and like this you have some file with some content in it. Okay and you want to count the number of words in each sentence. For example in each line you want to count how many number of words are there. Okay. So for that you have a certain function to count uh, that is it should split the particular line based upon the space and then it should count the number of words in the line. Okay. So here these are the input statements for spark session and I have created the spark variable with the help of uh, spark session and builder. If the object is already available this method will um, get that object if not it will create a new object. Okay. So now I have an RDD which reads the data from the text file. So using the spark dot spark context, I am invoking the text file method in order to read the content of the sample dot txt file. Okay. And now I am calling the RDD dot map. This is the map function. So what I wanted to do is I want to split each line and find the length of the words in that particular line okay so i'm invoking the map and i'm passing each and every line of that particular text file so rdd dot map what it does it sends each and every line to this particular function and the result of it which will be stored in the number of words so this i'm converting into a list with the help of a collect method so collect method is actually an action so as we saw the lazy evaluation, nothing happens until the actual action is invoked. So this particular collect converts the RDD to a list. When we try to print this data, we will know about the number of words in every line. Okay. So just have a look at the sample file once again. Let us try to run the program. So you can see here the first line contains two words which is nothing but hello world and the second contains 10 which is nothing but Apache Spark is a multi language engine for executing data engineering and same with the data science and so on. Okay. So this map function it actually return a new distributed data set formed by passing each element of the source to a, through a function. Now you are able to understand the definition of this map function, right? Okay. Next comes the flat map. This actually the difference between map and flat map is very important in the, with the perspective of interview preparation. Even I have faced these kinds of questions during my earlier stages. So the interviewer, if he want to understand how far you are comfortable with the basic concept, then these kinds of questions would be triggered. 
So flat map, this is actually similar to map, but there is only one difference. Let us try to understand the program first and then we will go to the definition. So now I have the same way I have created the Spark uh, object. And here is my data. It is actually a list that contains Apache Spark, Data Science, Machine Learning and Artificial Intelligence and something like that. Okay. I'm, I'm paralyzing the data and creating a new RDT. Okay. So data before the transformation, we will just try to print it out. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to print each element in the RTT. Okay. So data before transformation, I get the same like whatever I have given in the data. It's in the same list format. I'm getting it here. Okay. Let us try to use the flat map and see what it does. So here I'm creating another RDD, which is nothing but RDD dot flat map of I'm using the flat map function here. Lambda um, and I'm splitting it based upon the space. So for every space, I wanted to split the data. Okay. So now what would be the actual output? Let us see. So when you see here, the data before the transformation is Apache Spark, Data Science, Machine Learning and Artificial Intelligence. And after transformation with the flat map, it has made each and every word as a separate element. Okay. Uh, do you get the difference? So, so what did you do in map? In map, we just tried to split the data and we found the length. So for each element, that is for each row, you got the number of uh, words in that row. So that is one to one. So one input and you get one output. Whereas here for every input, you may get more output item. So let us see the definition flat map, which is similar to map, but each input item can be mapped to zero or more output items. So one input will have more number of output items. Okay. So in these kinds of scenarios where you have the data and you want to identify or bring out more number of outputs from that particular data, then you can go for flat map. But when you wanted to do one to one mapping, for example, you one element, you need only one output, then we can go for map. Okay. Next is the filter. Next is the filter. If you're already aware of SQL, then you would have used like uh, uh, options like is in or in particular range or between this and that like that, right? So this is some, something similar to that. So referring to the IPL data set in the previous videos on broadcast variables. So this is same kind of data. So we have you have players information like Rohit Sharma. He belongs to Mumbai Indians and his age is 34. Uh, Jadeja, he belongs to CSK and 33 and so on okay so now i have certain columns which are defined so player a name team and age so these are the column column names which are pointing to this particular data and i'm creating a data frame with the help of these two information let us try to view this particular data frame Okay, so now here it is a tabular format. It is neatly formatted like with Rohit Sharma, he belongs to MIN 34 and like things like that. Suppose if we want to filter for only the CSK players, then you can do so with the help of filter method. So from the data frame name, you call the filter method where this particular data frame and from the column team, you can select only the CSK players and you wanted to show it, okay? So there would be scenarios where the data is very huge and you wanted to, when you're building a machine learning model, instead of building the model based upon the whole set of information, there would be certain scenarios to build only for certain years ranges or only for certain countries 
or um, and uh, similar scenarios like that so in those cases this particular filter will definitely will be helpful for you in order to uh, reduce the size of your data or in order to concentrate on one specific area or one specific region of your data okay so let us try to visualize how would be the output So if you see here, only the players from the CSK are displayed in the, after using the filter method. Okay. In the next video, we will try to understand few more commonly used methods under transformations. Okay. Thanks for watching this video. Have a nice day.